and welcome back to another episode of the ESPC's First Timers Club and this week we've got a little bit of a different kind of episode for you. We are speaking to a fellow first time buyer. So we're speaking to Sam Nixon, he works at one of our ESPC solicitor estate agents and he has recently purchased his first home. So we asked Sam if he could come and chat to me about his experience and I think it's a really useful episode just to hear about somebody who is currently buying in the current market. So I'll pass you over to my chat with Sam. Hi Sam. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks so much for, for joining me today as You're a welcome. first time buyer. Yeah. Um, so just for the viewers at home, um, so that they know some context, you yep. work for one of our ESPC member firms, Hastings. I do, proudly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you're based down in the borders yeah. and you're a property manager slash valuer. Yeah, that's right. Perfect. Um, but you're here as a first time buyer because you've just bought your first home. Yeah, so we're, my fiance and I, Katrina, we're just, we've had our offer accepted over the last couple of weeks. So we're going through the process um, together, obviously being first time buyers. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's been a complete new insight compared to being on the opposite side yeah. as a and as I say agent, you know, selling properties to clients. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's been insightful at least. Yeah, no, absolutely. So let's go back to when when you made the decision that you were ready to, to yeah. buy for the first time. When when did you make that decision? So we've it's always been on the cards. I think we've been um, as a couple for about four years now and recently engaged and we just thought right the next step is definitely getting a house so we we've been on and off looking on the websites like espc right move all the sort but um it wasn't until maybe the start of this year that we took it seriously um and yeah start of this year was when it sort of first started obviously spoke to a mortgage advisor started the ball rolling it was interesting for me because in my career as an estate agent i've been in plenty of homes more than I can count um, but it was an, it was nice to be on the opposite side of it when we started to look for ourselves and yeah. find out what we liked and what we didn't like and things like that yeah absolutely and um, you know how many properties were did, did you have to go and did you go and view and then <laughs> make offers on and... yeah. <laughs> so we we had Katrina obviously completely new to the to the to the process hadn't seen any houses um, I think before we found the one that we're in now, or that we purchased, we'd maybe viewed about five, five or six. Okay. And it was a combination of those that were on, on the market with agents, and then we also looked at a couple new builds as well. And I think when we were looking, you know, sometimes you see what's available, and obviously when we're moving to a scythe, the area in that market's really quite hot and buoyant. So because of that, actually availability wise there wasn't that many on the market apart from new builds mm-hmm. so it was an interesting bit so to say yeah exactly and um in terms of so, so you mentioned you're moving to recite that but you currently yeah. stay in the borders yes. so um that's maybe for some people would think that's quite a big move to a new area yeah. um so <laughs> what do you, have you done um yeah how did you decide that you wanted to live in recite so Katrina, she works in Dunfermline mm-hmm. um, and with her job being chartered accountant and just starting at a new firm, she was very settled. For me, being a valuer especially, I'm always on the road anyway. So it was, for me, as long as it was commutable and the commute was relatively straightforward, yeah. I don't mind being on the road each morning. It's okay. Yeah. Getting podcasts in and things like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So we'd looked at different areas. We were looking at Delkeith. We were looking um, in the borders area, but I couldn't convince her to come down. So... <laughs> Uh, we kind of settled on Rasaif. Um, her sister lives there as well, so we knew the area quite quite well from that. Um, and obviously, being so close to the motorway and the A seven twenty, it worked for me for my commuting element as well. well that yeah. was where we had sort of landed on the location. Yeah, I think you do have to make some compromises when yeah. you're you're buying as well, because. Um, I don't know if you had like a checklist of things that you need, the property needed to have. My checklist might be more than most. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's from being in the industry. Mm-hmm. You could say I was quite picky and it certainly caused a lot of tension between Katrina and I because she very much had a wish list but not being aware of the process as well. Her wish list was probably out of our budget, <laughs> uh, shamefully. But um, but it was good that we, 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 we had our non-negotiables. I think it's always important that when you are looking at something try and have things that you are set on Mm -hmm. so for me it was very much the commutable aspect Um, for her it was very much the area that she liked you know we had our sort of go-to's where we could afford where we couldn't afford 
Um, and then the list just, we kind of went through each other. We knew we wanted three bedrooms. Um, if it was a bonus to be detached, great. If not, at least a semi. We didn't want to try and get a terrace or anything like that. Yeah. But that was maybe coming from my element as an estate agent and yeah. thinking, you know, ideally it's nice if you can get these, but we knew what we could and couldn't get for the areas at least. Yeah, I think it's about being sensible. But <laughs> um, And then, yeah, as you said, have your non-negotiables so yeah. that you know, you know what you're not budging on. Um, and uh, when when so obviously you you moved to Rosyth for you know pers you know personal circumstances. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you find out more about life in Rosyth? Did you do any research about moving to a new area? I was I had no idea. <laughs> uh, Katrina had more of an idea, but then saying that she um, lived in South Queensferry, so okay. we we were kind of just across the bridge, so we knew it was across the bridge and in that area, but. Rasaith kind of came from her sister living there, spending a bit more time in the area, mm -hmm. and then we just basically spent a few weekends driving around, seeing what's yeah. about, finding the places that we liked, and then we quickly realised that actually there's quite a lot in the area. So that was a sort of bonus for us, at least when it came to uh, trying to figure out the area and what was what was around there. Yeah, I think so, and especially for first time buyers, they don't t if they're renting somewhere, mm -hmm. they normally we'll have to leave that area to yeah. buy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know, especially with the city centre, a lot of people rent in the likes of uh, Leith or maybe closer yeah. to the city centre, like Newtown, but the actually purchase price of some of those properties are maybe out of their oh, budget. Oh, it was <laughs> silly. It really was. I mean, obviously, we both lived at home, um, mm -hmm. and I think that helped us at least be less more relaxed about where we were looking. We didn't yeah. have a definite time scale as far as where we wanted to be, and yeah. we wanted to be in before the end of the year, and yeah. that's sort of still the plan, but... Um, I think when the living at home gave us the advantages for at least not having those sort of pressures for rent also helped to save as well. You yeah. know, obviously Edinburgh, anywhere near Edinburgh, the prices start to rise a little bit. So yeah. that helped a lot as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so you obviously were familiar with the process of mm -hmm. what's involved, but was there any surprises along the way for you as yeah. on the other side of the I process. I thought I could go in it very level headed, <laughs> treat it as a business transaction. Mm -hmm. I think as soon as we viewed the first property, it went out the window. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um I know that for me it was always the case of because I knew the what goes on behind the doors on the opposite side, mm -hmm. I think it I thought it would give me an advantage. I think it gave me a disadvantage because um I was probably stressing and overthinking these situations. So when we started viewing properties, we'd offered on other properties as well, and um, we were unsuccessful. But I think, from my perspective, I knew that we were probably blowing out the water and all that sort of stuff. Um, but I think where it helped me from being in the job was knowing quite quickly what houses I liked and didn't like. Whereas for Katrina, mm -hmm. she was very much she needed a bit more time because mm -hmm. she's not been in as many houses and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, it was quite a fun element, and I think the surprises came along just because of the fact that, like I say. I thought I'd be level-headed, but when I was in it, you know, you think you can take the emotion out of it, yeah. you can't. Yeah. Um, it's, I think, when you're buying your first home, you're only ever going to buy your first home once. And mm -hmm. I think it's such a, it should be a joyful process, but there's also definitely the stresses. And I think the surprises were, the biggest surprise for me was just thinking that I could go in here, be level-headed, and no, I couldn't. Yeah, no, I know. It's absolutely a, like a fight between your head and your heart as yeah, well, I think, when you go and view. Um, so, no, I think that's that's really interesting. And I think a lot of people probably feel the same mm -hmm. because a part of it is it's just a transaction. Yeah. But it's somewhere you're going to live. No, exactly. <laughs> and, and you know, you get carried away with thinking, right, the sofa can go here, yeah. the table can go there. Um, right, what colour are we painting the walls? And I, yeah. I think going back to our list of non-negotiables, we knew that we wanted quite an entertaining area. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted a nice kitchen. I love a project. I'll do as much DIY as possible. <laughs> Katrina, she likes a bit more moving ready. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think it was definitely a striking the balance between the two. I know that when we looked, the first property we ever viewed was in Cowden Beef, so it was a bit further mm -hmm. in Fife. And yeah. um, it was a bit of a project. And I just remember going round I had so many ideas, big garden, loads of plans, and then Katrina's face has just said it all. She was like, yeah, no, this just doesn't happen. <laughs> and I'm going, but we can do this. And she's like, no, not happening. I know. It's quite a daunting I, um, prospect, though, to, to do a lot of DIY yeah. for, your first, for your first house as well. Um, but I think that it's... Yeah, it's good to strike that balance. Because yeah. I, I remember we were the same. We moved into 
a relatively move-in ready. Well, it was. It was completely remove ready, but you want to be able to put your stamp on it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I think the one we've managed to secure, it was a combination of the both. It's very much move-in ready, but there's still elements that we can add to it and, yeah. and put our own personal taste in it. Because I think, you know, a lot of people going into the process, especially as first-time buyers, they have so many ideas and so much excitement of finally getting something that's their own and, and maybe putting their own taste to it. Yeah. And um, it's nice that we've managed to find somewhere that kind of ticks both our boxes. Yeah, absolutely. And um, do you have any advice that you would give to for other first-time buyers? Yeah, I think firstly would be enjoy the process. Um, a lot of people, you know, would say to me, especially when we missed out on the first property, I was really disheartened. Yeah. And, um, but everyone, you know, that famous saying that what's meant for you won't see you buy. I think just stick with it. Something will come along. The market is so buoyant at the moment that there's always new properties coming in. You don't know what's around the corner. It might seem that there's nothing there now, but will something will come along. Um, and I think the other thing as well that I would really say is go to your local agents. If there's an area that you know you want to go to, go and see what agents are in there in that area. Speak to them. They're always there to help out and offer the advice. And I think we were fortunate that because of what I do as a job, I could offer that advice to Katrina, but I definitely can see the daunting aspect for first time buyers because it is such an unfamiliar process. Um, so I would definitely say speak to local estate agents, even the SPC as well. Obviously there's a lot of information on the website about yeah. first time buyers and processes. And I think it can set it out in black and white and there's no silly question. I think we've heard it all in our jobs, you know, there's no question that we're not unhappy to answer. Yeah. And I'm sure that with local firms that, you know, they'd be happy to help any way they can. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great piece of advice about um, reaching out to a, a local agent. And um, it's interesting that you say that about your first offer. Yeah. Getting, I think that is, obviously if you get your first offer accepted, that's amazing. Yeah, perfect. The, the, the process is even more streamlined. Yeah. But I, I was the same when I bought mine, We that was our second offer, but I know some people it's fifth, sixth, seventh, you know, yeah, exactly. it, it can be way. And it, um, can be, it can be so daunting. Um, I, we only had, fortunately we only ever offered them two, including the one that we were successful on. But when we first got the rejection and realized that actually our list of what we want, we might have to tone it down. I think trying to stick with it and just know that, you know, something will come along, but it can be disheartening, especially when, if you think you found the one, it ticks us all the boxes, you know, for us, the first one we offered on did, it ticked every box, everything. And it was the first time for me where I had become excited about a property. Yeah going back to that level headedness going in, I was just thinking, yeah, this will do, I, you know, it's fine. But this one really was like, oh my days, this is it. Yeah. And then when we got the phone call and, and realized that we were unsuccessful, I think it was just devastating. We didn't view a few properties for at least three weeks and it was hard to get back onto the road of going, right, okay, something will come along yeah. because the market was so quick where properties come on and then go off so quickly, mm -hmm. it was, um, there was just a, there was a sort of time and loo period where we were just like, well, do we just have to put it in pause and wait? Um, but then the one that we were successful on came up and it came out of the blue. And then I think it was a familiar aspect to go, right, oh, actually, just stick with it. Mm -hmm. I think, th you know, time, as a first time buyer, depending on your circumstances, you know, we were fortunate that we had time on our side. Yeah. You know, we're not in a chain. We knew, we knew that because yeah. we're not in a chain, it helped out and we could just be more rational about the decision of the profit that we went for yeah absolutely and i think um having that time is is good but it, it it can mean that it's a having a quick market that you have to work in is quite stressful as well and as much as it's heartbreaking to have those offers declined i think sometimes it is like you said it kind of makes you reassess it means that you're in an even better position for the next one it's just all about learning learning for the next yeah, definitely. one definitely um so how w would you have any advice for anyone who is maybe looking in an area that has a really hot market just now and yeah. and how to deal with things that aren't on the market for very long <laughs> yeah. um for for me i i quickly formed the opinion that if something came on use it uh, go and view it as quickly as possible um obviously espc has its advantages where you have that period where that 72 hours was quite fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, I also spoke to a lot of the local agents and asked to be put on their direct mailing lists. Okay. 
Okay. Um, a lot of good agents will send out properties as they hit the website, so always be notified like that. Um, I know from my perspective, if I have first-time buyers that are on my books and it's a first-time buyer property, I'll usually get in contact with them to say, you know, we have this coming on, keep an eye out for it. And it's a good way of trying to get in there quickly. And I think if if you really like it, don't dilly-dally, try and make yourself available. Um, I think for us, we offered after the first view, and sometimes it's nice to get two viewings in there, but it's not always possible. Um, but I definitely think speaking with the agents, making sure you're on their mailing list, keeping in constant contact with them, mm-hmm. they'll tell you what they've got coming on, or if they know they've got something coming on in the area, they'll keep you in mind. The more active you are with them, I think the more active they'll be with you as well. Um, and just know that as a first-time buyer, you do have a good position, especially because of the, the lack of a chain element. Yeah. For a lot of buyers, sometimes, you know, you'll for a lot of sellers, sorry, you'll have people that want to sell their property to a first-time buyer. They want to help out in that essence. And also they know that there's relatively low risk for first-time buyers because yeah. of the no chain. So I think for popular areas that are really buoyant, it's just a case of keep your alerts on, keep an eye out, and if something does come on, get yourself in there as quickly as possible. Yeah, absolutely. You're so right about the sellers um, being quite, you know, like quite liking first-time buyers because you've heard a lot of stories about sometimes sellers won't even go for the highest yeah. offer. They'll go for maybe the second highest offer is a first-time buyer and they don't have something to sell. Yeah. That's, way more, that's way more preferable than... Yeah, definitely. And I think, especially for me, uh, when it comes down to closing dates, um, I think if you can put yourself in a position where you offer what you is, is the most you can, but is still within the affordability, because yeah. it's so easy to just go crazy with it and yeah. then not actually do your affordability checks afterwards. Yeah. So when we were, especially in a fast market, we were always speaking with our mortgage advisor. We knew what was our affordability. I think one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that anything over the home report valuation you have to have in your pocket yeah. ready yeah. and that's separate to your deposit so we knew that we had a pot which we could use how far we could go over mm-hmm. um and i think having that information is crucial so definitely speaking to um your mortgage broker and the estate agents as well they'll give you the good advice that you need to know um and your solicitor obviously in scotland you need to solicitor for these offers and and they're always there to help they've gone hundreds of cases and you know years of experience so mm-hmm. um, just use it if, if you if you're worried about what you can and can't afford that's a good way of trying to figure it out yeah absolutely I think the message really is that they have you have to be really proactive I think yeah. as a first time buyer and, just and, I, and I think but because it's a busy market as well it's trying to remind yourself that yes okay I've missed this one but because it's so buoyant and so things are coming on I think you need to know that something will come you know whether it's that one or the next one um try not get disheartened and it was easy for me to say now that i found somewhere yeah. and i was definitely in that and i think it it changed my outlook a lot because obviously i become a bit numb to properties because of dealing with them in such a, a volume but i think I, it just made me think and appreciate the process and actually appreciate the circumstances of first time buyers so knowing that i'm going through the process myself i think it, it agents will will realize that too yeah absolutely well that is everything i had uh, written down to ask you is there anything else you want to add before we finish up no like i say i think just enjoy it yeah you know the right one will come along and just keep an eye out on the market i think um obviously christmas is approaching us so there'll be the there'll be a big spell of properties coming on people trying to get on before then and then it'll quieten down for christmas and everyone can enjoy the roast chicken or whatever (laughs) perfect thanks no worries thank you so that was my chat with sam um he mentioned loads of great advice that uh, he would give to you guys as uh, first-time buyers if you are looking for any more advice as sam mentioned you can head over to the espc website and get more tips for first-time buyers and stay tuned to this podcast and we're here every single week so in the meantime um, if you've got any questions please drop us a comment if you're watching on youtube and if you're listening on podcasts please feel free to send us an email at marketing at otherwise i'll see you next week bye